Hello, welcome to the upcoming. I'm Samuel Nichols, and I have the absolute pleasure to be sitting down with Jakob Pjatic, whose new film Primetime is currently playing in the World Cinema Dramatic Competition in the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. Hi, Jakob, how are you? Hi, hi, I'm, I'm fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, for those who might not have seen the trailer for Primetime or seen the film itself yet, uh, how would you describe the film and where did, this inspira- where did the inspiration for the idea come from? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, a prime time, prime time is, uh, um, uh, is set up at the end of uh, '99, and it's, um, it's uh, it, it focuses on uh, um, uh, a young guy, Sebastian, who gets into a TV station with a gun, and he's taking two hostages and want to go live and say uh, some really important question, and. Um, yeah, and we like we started this 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 um, this film as a fantasy about le- rebelling and rebels, and um, and we found uh, like similar stories around the world, like in states uh, at the end of nineties and in Poland, but also in Burkina Faso, and so uh, it was like kind of pop- popular back then to. Uh, to get into a, a TV station and try to uh, uh, hijack the broadcast. Uh, so um, yeah, and uh, uh, and we like our fantasy uh, 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 right now is Sebastian, mm. like the rebel, and uh, Sebastian kind of needs uh, uh, audience members to be complete protagonists. That's such an interesting point because you said in the in an interview for the Sundance uh, Institute YouTube channel that the idea came from your guys in their thirties who want that rebellion and want that need for change. And while I don't imagine you're about to take a, a TV studio hostage anytime soon, I do think there is like this pervasive feeling of rebellion among our generation. Um, you know, could you expand on that? You know, why do you think there's such a feeling of like change and rebellion? within us and and how is that even still the case you know 20 years on from when the film set yeah um yeah we, we like we 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 just use a costume from like late 90s as uh, like as a tool but um uh, what we wanted is like to to like to tell the story in contemporary world uh, and uh, I've got the feeling, like, w- and it's shared with uh, co-writer Łukasz Czapski, that that there is a, uh, there is like this tremors in in our societies that that you can feel, and that there is a uh, there is this, this kind of a tension, uh, and that something needs to change, and uh, and it's happening right now in Poland. Uh, it happens in 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 in, in states and. Uh, uh, and all, all over the, the, the Europe. So, um, and I've got the feeling that right now, you know, when you're like logging into a Facebook, like the first question that pops up is like, what do you think? And we are like overwhelmed with, uh, uh, you know, with, with this like status change and then, and then people are uh, like, right now we can make manifestos like every day, but yeah. like nobody is listening kind of and like back then that the, there was like this hierarchy and uh, there was like this mount olympus like a, a national uh, tv station uh, that 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 you can hijack and like say whatever you want mm. um, uh, and and that that's why we used to like 99 that's so interesting and you really captured the 90s aesthetic so well in the film. I mean, the fashion, the decor, the the technology, it screams, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, how did you go about capturing that sense of the 90s? And, you know, how did you manage to get the technology to be so accurate? Yes, yeah, so, so it was like, a, a, um, like, yeah, it was like one of the, like the biggest challenges in, 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 uh, in, in, in production. So uh, uh, I still remember 99. Um, I'm so old that I remember <laughs> that, uh, and uh, and so the uh, as well like as costume designer. Uh, so um, our costume designer uh, Hanka Podraza, like she's a queen of uh, thrift shops and the like second hand shops. So uh, we like like we bought like all over the country like costumes for our film 
um, from 99 uh, or try to copy them uh, but like using like the like the real real thing uh, for the actors and um, we found um, a TV studio from that was built in late 60s and it was like not operating uh, like from end of 90s to this day so it was kind of like we needed to like just give a, a little more details and uh, it was working and 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 we hired a retired uh, studio engineer and he just uh, found like old cameras that are still working and monitors and we just like uh, recreated the operating tv studio um because it was like a it was like the main thing for the actors, okay? If they are using the technology and they are like communicating via intercom or cameras or, or, or the sound in, in the studio, it should be working. And uh, we should like record that and, and, uh, uh, and use it as a, as a tool uh, for storytelling as well. That's so interesting. The fact you managed to get that actual technology, the immersion must be great it must have also been quite tricky you know you know 90s technology wasn't exactly easy to use at times did you struggle occasionally filming having to deal with these old cameras and these old machines yeah it's uh, i think it's like uh, you know it's, it's like a huge like 500 kilos cameras <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like like massive things so, so it, it's uh, it's a problem to like to 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 break it down mm -hmm. but it's like it's it's funny to like to use it use this uh, sd text, texture because like right now you have like in your pocket uh, like hd cameras or 4k cameras and there's like you know, one third of it, or something like this, and it's like uh, pretty shitty. And uh, but but it's uh, it, it is also like this 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 nineties look um, yeah. that that we were looking for. Uh, but that like like so we use it like partially and use like beta cam tapes and stuff like this. But we also like use like contemporary uh, technology like new cameras and like oh rather old lenses but lenses from 70s but like yeah cinema camera as well that's so interesting i mean that is touching on there the idea is perspective is so big in the film you know what lenses looking at who and towards the latter half of the film you have more filmed cameras within the building itself recording it looping back to what you said earlier about social media and the idea of getting who has like the ability to broadcast what they want to say um a really big aspect of the film is sebastian being prevented to being able to say what he wants to say um when you were writing this film how did you go about like exploring the idea of obstacle and speaking because i think like you said at the moment there's such a difficulty of we'll all be able to speak but none of us are really being able to be heard how did you go about writing sebastian as a character who speaks these times yeah, so uh, um, it's uh, it's uh, like there is like this strong engine that comes from uh, uh, like genre storytelling. Like, mm -hmm. like we also like hostage movies, like Dog Day Afternoon, and and and, and uh, you know people robbing banks and taking hostages and stuff like this. So mm -hmm. there is like some tools you can use and you can play with them, and you can play with a uh, like flirt with a genre. But like at the, at the end of the day, there, what we really focused on was like psychological aspects and our characters and like how much you can um, uh, know them from just a couple of hours uh, of extreme situation. And, um, and uh, it's, it's all on the paper, but like at the end of the day, there's there is a human being and it's actor and it's Bartosz Bielenia who is like just stepping in and uh, uh, and uh, and and that that that's the moment when when the character starts uh, starts the protagonist starts to to be alive kind of and so we like we worked like a it was like a one year more than one year of a process with with Bartosz of like just getting to know each other and trying to find other 
cast members so doing uh, like castings with with Bartosz as well as a like partnering actor and like going back and forth one one, one to another and like just exchanging inspirations and um and at the at the end like what you can do is is to make like the most intimate thing so write down the manifesto so yeah. Bar Bartosz wrote his I wrote mine and we exchange it and that's the most intimate moment so uh, you are just sharing like what you want to say to the world and uh, what's inside your head kind of mm -hmm. uh, yeah and it was like a, it was like a kind of like a breakthrough for uh, for, 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 for our work, yeah. And I think from the reviews so far, people have really liked what you've you know, had in your head, if you like. I mean, the reviews have been so great. They've praised the film's execution, your tone, the actor's performances. One review also pointed out a similarity to a 2016 film, Money Monster, directed by Jodie Foster, in which a man hijacks a TV studio but a finance TV show. Were you aware of Money Monster when you were going about making this film? Well, there's some similarities, are of course, very different, very different films. Were you aware of that film? Uh, yeah, like uh, like during like our way to like to get the finance for the film, it it it, it popped out, and so I watched it. And uh, uh, but like our story is like so different, and it's like even uh, I think Money Monster is like uh, using like a. Uh, at temporary times and it's like it's it's it's, it's uh, right here right now so you've got like this social media feed and stuff like this uh, uh, that they are using but uh, yeah it's a you know it's a Hollywood film and uh, we, like we are like a small psycholo psychological drama flirting with a hostage situation uh, uh, in Europe so uh, it's 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 uh, uh, it's uh, it, there is a, there is a huge distance like already um yeah, based on uh, what's what's on, the, on, on, on in the script yeah and interesting on that point though is that a lot of reviews have said primetime succeeds where money monster fails where primetime accurately creates that sense of you know psychological drama and exploring the character where money monster is a bit more of a blockbustery just kind of big action um when you were looking into psychological characters if not Money Monster then, what films did you look at for inspiration? You've mentioned, you know, uh, heist films, like robbery films. If you could like highlight some films that, you know, accurately convey the themes or, or the energy of prime time, what would you suggest? Uh, like, so there, there was like these two groups of films, like inspiration uh, themes. Uh, so on the one hand, there was like a Dog Day Afternoon, which is like a Bible. And it's like, it's a great film. It's a great performance. Uh, and uh, it's like Sidney Lumet, Lumet's at his best, I think. Um, uh, uh, and it's, uh, it, it's not getting old at all, I think, um, in terms of like editing and like storytelling, like using the camera. Um, uh, so, so that that mm, this kind of uh, films, and on the other hand, there was uh, films that we watched uh, that they are like just you you know like really condensed in in terms of uh, time and space. Mm -hmm. So films like uh, Guilty by Gustav Miller, which I really love, and uh, or Loca, um, and. Yeah, so 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 just maybe even to encourage like actors and uh, and team members that you can tell a feature length story just you know using like a close up for uh, for, 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 for 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 a lot of t uh, screen times. Yeah, so the, and there was like also like this film that we really liked. There was like maybe some inspirations in the mood and and in characters it's like american animals by, by bart lighton which right. i really great yeah you can see yeah, the it's a, yeah yeah and it's like also it's a hybrid film because like we use like a, an archive scene in our film so there's like this you know uh you can like uh, we use like a found footage f uh, things but um archive materials but it's like you can like just put like a little bit more air uh, into into a story and 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 just use like uh, documentary storytelling as well and mm. like something like more like an essay 
than 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 like you know plot wise storytelling. Yeah. Um, speaking of feature films then and inspiration, this was your first full length feature. Um, how did you find the process overall? I mean, I I, I know you've had previous experience in you know, making media and making content for people but in terms of this being your first like full-length movie how do you find the process overall yeah it was like um it was like really great because uh uh, uh i worked with uh, friends uh so uh, um and even if i like met someone new we be- became friends at yeah. the end of the process which is like really helpful uh and um and uh, because it's, uh, I, I think there is like a lot of bluffing at the beginning of uh, m- making a film, uh, especially like uh, the first film, uh, because you don't know and you need to s- sometimes pretend that you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's nice to have, a, to have people that, that uh, you can tell them that you don't know and we can like together figure something out. Uh, but we also worked with uh, uh, like really ex- experienced um, uh, uh, production studio. It's it's watch out studio. So uh, they they gave us really the time for time and like resources for for development. So we could like rehearse the film and just like be better, be better and be prepared and just like grab those moments. Um, uh, uh, on set. Fantastic. I mean, you said in a previous interview that, you know, you were working on primetime even to a few weeks ago, editing it down. Um, one of the greatest things about primetime is the sense of Sebastian getting stuck in that space. And I think over the last year, a lot of us have felt stuck indoors, you know, because of the pandemic. I mean, the, it must be like a very happy surprise for you to make a film that kind of echoes the coronavirus even ahead of itself did you have you felt at all like sebastian in the last year being stuck in source yeah 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 i you know yeah like during the lockdown i didn't have a time for you know uh pot making or finding a new hobby or learning new language uh uh i hope there will be more time for for that like in near future <laughs> but uh um uh in it, it, it's we, we we shot the film during pandemic so uh you know there is this line from mira uh like one of the hostage and uh, uh she's like telling to the like uh, uh tv chairman do you know how to be lonely and do you uh, do you know how to feel isolated and it's like kind of like we all like felt that and we, we like could be more connected to this line and uh, and and it was like just all around us yeah no completely yeah um speaking of mira then her character has a great arc in the uh in the film when she first arrives she's almost quite a comedic character but then she becomes a bit of a center point of sebastian's work um how did you go about creating that character because i think her involvement is so much fun. Did you work with the actress to find the characterization much, or was it you know already there in the script? Yeah, it, it, I think it's like uh, like both. Uh, but um, uh, I, it's it it, it, it it always it is like working with actors. I think mm-hmm. it's an actors' film, uh, and uh, and and. Uh, what I'm trying to do is like to to treat them as co-creators, not just yeah. you know like like this like 3D models <laughs> that you you need to like put a lamp or and 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 like put them in front of a camera, uh, and uh, and I'm uh, we worked with uh, Magda Popławska, uh, like she's like a great actress, and we during the lockdown there was like you know. Uh, y- we all had like empty calendars so there was like uh, more time to uh, like to develop the, the characters we also like uh, talked a lot with uh, with uh, like former tv stars from oh, wow. 90s just to have this feeling yeah. and, uh, and 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 help her and but it's like it's all magda popowska you know it's just it's, it's filtered by by her 
and um, mm, 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 yeah, but we we kind of like wanted the character. It, it, it's it's a it's a funny thing to like to observe as a director. Just you know, you are putting like three people, Sebastian, Mira, and security guy, in one place, and they couldn't uh, uh, and wouldn't uh, like meet in the real life outside of the situation and they are stuck there and you you, know, you just can see like what's what's between them and how 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 the relationship like evolve completely i mean one of my favorite moments in the film is quite early on it's when mira and the uh, security guy are in in the car and it's just incredibly funny and incredibly awkward at times to watch these two de very different people interact it, I don't suppose you probably intended the, f the film to be funny at times, but you must have discovered comedy along the way, like little moments like that. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, mm, like for example, like uh, like the film that we like already like uh, discussed, like Dog Day Afternoon. There is like a funny moments there, and uh, and and it's, and it's based on true story. And uh, like when the when the like bank tellers. Uh, got out of the uh, like the hostage situation. The first thing that uh, they've said to uh, to newspapers was that it was like the most funny uh, and incredible night of their lifetime, and uh, and they were like hostages. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can like f found uh, f find humor in like different places, and uh, also like in hostage situations. So yeah, how fun. Um Although, you know, we're still in the midst of discussing prime time, have you got your eyes on the future? I mean, after the success of this film, you must be looking forward to future projects. Is there anything you've been working on that you think, you know, might be exciting to work on next? Yeah, I'm, mm, mm, I, I will uh, hopefully shot a documentary film. It will be like feature length documentary about, uh, uh, it's a coming of age story of, uh, um, young pianists from around the world uh, who are competing in Chopin piano competition, which is like Olympics uh, mm -hmm. for pianists, uh, young pianists, and, uh, and and they are from different countries, um, from different continents even, and uh, uh, so that that's the that that's my next next project. And like like because of prime time and Sundance, maybe I will have more courage to uh, to do a, like a little bigger film, uh, like a feature film uh, that I, I've been working um, on with a like, Polish writer. Uh, so yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Jakub, thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, Thanks. Uh, I'd like everyone to possibly watch this to go watch prime time. It is an incredible film. Very tense, very funny at times as well. Um, Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank you.